This is historic Armenia. The land of Armenia is the cradle of the Armenian nation as well as one of the cradles of ancient civilization. The Armenian language belongs to the Indo-European linguistic family. The homeland of Proto-Indo-European speaking people is the Armenian highland. Scientists such as comparative linguist Vyacheslav Ivanov, Thomas Gomkrelidze, Aaron Dolgopolsky, Joseph Greenberg, Mary Trulan, and many others posited that the homeland of the Proto-Indo-European language was and is Armenian highland. Academicians from many countries used various scientific methods including multidisciplinary approaches like radiocarbon dating pioneered by Colin Renfrew and archaeogenetics by Luigi Cavalli Sforza within the broader comparative linguistics, archaeology and genetics. The latest fundamental work by two renowned scholars from the University of Auckland, Russell D. Gray and Quinton D. Atkinson, showed that the homeland of the Proto-Indo-European language tree is in Armenian highland in eastern Anatolia. The scholars used the computational method and made an astounding matrix of 87 languages with about 2,450 lexical items producing an estimated timeline for the initial Indo-European migrations from the homeland about 8 to 10,000 years ago. Figure 1 shows that the Armenian lineage is shown as distinct from Proto-Indo-European more than 7,000 years ago in its homeland, Armenian Highland. For many decades, the Turkish propaganda has been falsifying Armenian history. Just like the pan-Turkist ideologue and former Turkish Secret Service agent Esat Uras wrote in his book, The Armenians in History and the Armenian Question. Esat Uras stated, I regard it as necessary and important above everything else to point out that Armenia cannot be anything other than simple memory based on geography, origin without political boundaries. Center for Strategic Research of the Turkish Government's Foreign Ministry. It is very certain that the Armenians did not originate in Anatolia, nor did they live there for three to four thousand years as claimed. They have put forward these ideas merely to support their claims that the Turks drove them out of a homeland in which they have lived for thousands of years, but they cannot stand up to the facts. Turkish Government Center for Strategic Research of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Armenians claim that they were the people of Urartu, which existed in eastern Anatolia starting about 3000 BC. This claim has no basis in fact. No form of the name Armenian is found in any inscription in Anatolia dating from that period, nor was there any similarity at all between the Armenian language and that of Urartu. The former being a Satam group of Indo-European languages, while the latter was similar to the oral Altaic languages. Nor were there any similarities between their cultures. There is therefore absolutely no evidence at all to support the claim that the people of Urartu were Armenian. The Turkish government funded and promoted false Armenology claims that not only Armenians are not native to their homeland, but also have never had a state of their own. The most shocking thing is that the Armenian Studies Chairs of the Universities in the United States have also become the vehicles for promoting the Turkish version of Armenian history. Today, the more than one million Armenian Americans who are caught up in their everyday work cannot even imagine that the Armenian Studies Chairs in the U.S. are busy in decomposing the Armenian national identity and promoting the false Armenological school which corrupts and distorts Armenian history and culture parallel to the Turkish design. Here are some of the prominent representatives of the false Armenological school in the universities of the United States. Nina Garsoyan. Ronald Suni. Robert Thompson. Richard Hovanisian. 
James Russell, Peter Cowie, Alina Ivazian, Simon Payaslan. Throughout many decades, this false Armenological school pursued the following goals. First, they proclaimed that the Armenian people are newcomers and colonists in historical Armenia. They proclaimed that the ancestors of Armenians arrived in Armenian highland in the 6th century BC and destroyed the Urartians. Second, they proclaimed that the three outstanding 5th century historians, Pavstos Buzand, Movses Korenatsi, and Yerishe, are non-existent pseudo-historians, and their works are non-credible para-historic texts. Third, they proclaim that the present Armenian people are a product of intermingling of different ethnic groups. Fourth, they proclaim that the territory of Karabakh Artsakh historically belongs to Azerbaijan, since the Turkic Azeris are the direct descendants of the Caucasian Albanians. These kinds of claims of the representatives of the false Armenological school have found wide support in the Turkish and Anglo-American political establishment because the United States and its ally Turkey continue to pursue their geopolitical and oil interests in the Caucasus. As the British historian Christopher J. Walker pointed out, Prejudice against Armenians in Western academic and even diplomatic circles was to some extent legitimized by the Cold War when the attitude was to support Turkey whatever the cost. And despite the ending of the Cold War, a number of Western academics and ex-diplomats appear to remain quiet unwilling to extend any understanding to the Armenian viewpoint or to look seriously at its documentary basis. They continue to give almost uncritical support for the Turkish official version. As a result, much of what poses to be serious writing in academic journals about modern Armenian history is party pre, selective and unreliable. It is Cold War NATO history, which has an interest to cover up and which does not seek to discover or explain the situation as it really was. Christopher Walker, Armenia and Karabakh, The Struggle for Unity, London 1991, page 3. And now let us see how the representatives of the false Armenological school are pursuing the NATO policy in the United States. Ronald Grigor Sini, professor of social and political history at the University of Michigan. He was the first holder of the Alex Manugian chair in modern Armenian history at the University of Michigan. According to Ronald Suni, the national consciousness of Armenians about their identity is nothing but a collection of beliefs. Sunni writes that the primary purpose of his work is to decompose the Armenian national identity. According to Sunni, the ancestors of Armenians were invaders to Armenian highland who have migrated to Armenia in the 6th century BC. Ronald Grigor Sunni, Looking Towards Ararat, Armenia in Modern History, 1993, page 7. Repeating the Turkish historians, Sunni writes, The modern Armenians are more the product of intermingling. Same book, same page. Repeating the Turkish historian, Sunni writes that the Armenian-Turkish conflict was provoked by the Armenian nationalists in order to overtake Turkish Anatolia and the Turkish side simply reacted. Nation making, nation breaking, the end of the Ottoman Empire and the Armenian community, 1996, page 3. Repeating the Turkish historians, Sunni writes that the Turkic Azeris are the direct descendants of the Caucasian Albanians and that the territory of Karabakh Artsakh historically belongs to them. Ronald Grigor Sunni, Looking Towards Ararat Armenia in Modern History, 1993, page